In this short video, I'm going to show how we can measure code coverage on the Raspberry Pi. So here is the Raspberry Pi, and of course I have an HDMI cable to connect to the TV. I've got a, a wireless keyboard to control, and I've got uh, a Wi-Fi adapter so I can actually download to it from my PC. I need some code, so I've been on the web and I've found this penguin puzzle, and so that's what we're going to play. We're going to play this game, and as we play it, we're going to measure the structural coverage. So here we have Eclipse, and inside Eclipse, I've configured it to allow it to cross-compile for the Raspberry Pi. And here we can see I've created a project in which I've included the source code that I've obtained from the web. I've installed the LDRay plugin into Eclipse, and having installed that, I've selected the perspective, and I can now perform static analysis, complexity analysis. I've instrumented and built the program. I've downloaded and executed it on the target. I've played the game. I've then uploaded the coverage. And let's take a look and see what coverage have we actually obtained. Let's start by looking at a call graph. OK, so we're looking at a pass-fail call graph. Let's start by expanding that so we can see the names of the various functions and we can see how these functions are interconnected. But in this particular view, I can see in green the functions that have got the coverage that I'm expecting and in red, the ones that don't have the coverage. In white here, these are the effectively the, the system calls. So over here, we can see we've measured statement coverage, branch decision coverage and also MCDC coverage. Let's sort it, and there we can see very rapidly we've got pretty good coverage, in fact, 100% coverage for all these functions. Let's sort again, and this time we can see very clearly the functions for which we have no coverage. So it's possible these are dead code. Alternatively, maybe I've not exercised the code enough, not played it enough to get improved coverage. Let's take a look at this function. I've got 68% statement coverage. So let's take a look at a flow graph. And the flow graph is going to show us effectively a graphical representation of the code. And there we can see we have the representation. We can see clearly that we've executed all these blocks. This one we've not executed. Which block is that? Well, it's this break statement here. Why haven't we executed that? Well, this has never been true. We can also take a look at some branches. And there we can see we've not executed this branch from there to here. Also, we can see quite a bit of code here that's not been executed, and again, because this condition has never been true. Now finally, let's take a look at another view of the code. This time, let's look at a dynamic overview report. And if we maximize this, we can see very clearly that we've got pretty decent coverage. If we scroll down, we can see here, for instance, for level PT, we've got 100% statement coverage. And we have a plus, indicating that on the second time we've played the game, we've just increased the coverage. And here we can see the first time we've executed all these lines of code. Don't know how many times we've executed it, but we've executed at least once. These we didn't execute, but the second time I've played the game, I have got coverage for this. And so we've got the coverage that we require. So very rapidly, there's a, a quick overview of measuring the code coverage.